Hello. Um, it's been about a year since I made my last video. You don't need to know why, um, but look what I have. I'm just going to review every lens I bought for the GFX 100S. No edits, stream of consciousness, how we used to roll on this channel. Um, so I'm going to get literally straight into this. I haven't written anything down. I'm speaking from the gut because whilst there is a dearth of scientific information you can find about these lens from people that are smarter but less attractive than me, this is about practical usage in the field. I've had this camera for literally one year. I have taken it to Alaska, Peru, London, all around New York. I use it on a daily basis. I shoot portraits, I shoot landscapes, I shoot food pictures, I shoot everything. Um, here is my experience with this camera and these lenses because I just worked it out. I was like laid all of this stuff out in front of me and I'm like, spent about 20 grand on this stuff. So let's talk about what I regret and maybe what I don't. In short, if you haven't got a lot of time for this video, every single lens here is amazing, literally amazing. Some are more amazing than others, which we'll talk about. This camera, I'll do a separate video talking about my experiences with this camera specifically because I'm actually in love with it and I don't want to hurt its feelings, um, being a bit part in this one. Okay, this is the 23mm f4, um, the equivalent in, on this, doing some math top of my head, it's about 18 millimeters. Too wide for me. Um, it's very expensive. Um, it's one of the priciest lenses in Fuji's lineup. It's one that I've found used, one that I've found that I've used the least. Um, that is just a blunt thing. Why? Turns out I don't shoot much super wide angle stuff. I took it to Peru with me. The image quality from this is absolutely outstanding. Buy this lens if you need that focal length. Okay, so if you're doing interior architecture, if you're doing super massive landscapes for super massive landscape pictures, great. Uh, it's relatively handy with the macro extender as well. Um, super, probably too close focal length. I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about it Honestly, because it doesn't come with me many places, and it's probably the first lens that I would sell. Um, no criticism. Lovely lens. Just doesn't really work for my vibe. This guy. This is the 32 to 64 zoom lens, and there's the effective zoom range is about 10 steps. Uh, <laughs> this this is a weird lens because it was. One of those lenses that I bought, I was like, right, this lens will just live on my camera and I'll be able to do everything I need to do it. The zoom on this is, is 32 to 64, which is the equivalent of what, like 20, mid 20s to 50. It's not much. Uh, it doesn't really change the game in terms of flexibility. Again, as with all of these lenses, you are going to have no issue with image quality, except for the primes are definitely slightly better than this. Don't know why. It's not a sharpness thing. If you're into image sharpness, get a knife. Um, you're, every single camera can produce sharp images. The Fuji one does exceptionally sharp images. But when was the last time someone looked at a photo and, mm, so sharp. Like, who cares? Um, it's a, but there's, there's some weird feel. And you'll see me get a little bit more ethereal with the lenses that I do. I know I have a little to them. Uh, this lacks, but it is uh, a useful lens. I wouldn't call it a carry round lens because it's a fucking tank. Like, I'm big, I'm six foot four, this lens is the size of my head. It's heavy. Um, I used to use it a lot when I went to Peru. I literally hiked the Salcante Trail for five days, maybe I'll put some pictures up. And I used exclusively this lens and occasionally this guy for the wider stuff, thinking I was smart. I barely use this. I use this for everything. And at F4, sometimes, I don't know. I don't know, I, there's some certain draft about this that I lack, but if you want one lens for your Fuji system, look how many lenses you can buy, you fool. No, if you want one lens for your Fuji system, it's definitely in the conversation. Would I recommend it over anything else? No. <gasps> Comments. Um, what are we here? Oh, the 45. Okay, so the 45 is an effective 35 mil. Um, and I, if anyone, picks me up on, no, actually, it's 36.5, do one. I have absolutely no time for this conversation. This is a 35 millimeter lens, fight me. Honestly, fight me. Um, it's sick. There you go, there's your review. This is the lens that probably spends the most amount of time on my camera. Um, not because I am particularly in love with the 35 millimeter format, 
but because it turns out when you have this heavy artillery here, you just, this 35 millimeter lens can crop down to literally anything. It's beautiful, it's light. I mean, I've got all these with the hoods on. They all do that. <laughs> if, if, by the way, if, if that was a, a lesson and a news hack to you, don't buy this system, um, buy something cheap. Um, yes, it has a hood that removes, ooh, facts. Um, it's sick, this lens is great, it's probably one of the sharpest lenses, oh my god, listen to me, I've become everything I hate. It's one of the sharpest lenses, but it is, it's got that yeah. okay? People, people, people will know, photographers know, the real ones know what I mean by yeah. This has yeah in spades, and I love this lens, it will be one of the last lenses that I sell. Not that I'm planning on selling any of these, maybe you, uh, maybe you, maybe you, okay. 63 effective 50. 50 mil is my favorite focal length. Um, it's hard for me to separate my emotions about the sheer beauty challenge and perspective and fucking sickness that a 50 mil lens is. Um, this is not as nice as my, I'm filming this on an X-T4 by the way. It turns out I love spending money on loads of equipment. I'm gonna come back, give me two seconds. I'm running over here. This guy, okay. This is the 35 mil, 50 mil equivalent. It's got the sick little square hood for the Fuji X-T4. This lens is better than this lens. Again, fight me in the comments. There is a certain draft that lives in this lens that does not live in this lens. This lens is very capable though. And if you need a 50 mil, my boy, this is literally your only choice. So this is your guy. I would not buy this knowing what I know now, I would use my 35 and crop in for my 50, and then I would get my coverage from my 80. Um, if anyone's thinking that I'm an idiot for owning this many lenses in uh, the Fuji lineup, I'd like to defend myself by saying, you're right, I'm a fool. Do not buy all of these lenses. The level of crossover in them is ridiculous. Don't take a leaf out of my book. It is not cool to own lots of shit. Vast majority of the time this sits in my cupboard. I'm talking about the things that I use. Occasionally I need things for professional purposes, which are very specific. No need to own all of these lenses. Do not make the same mistakes that I have. Um, this lens, again, capable, very capable, very nice. Get some gorgeous images out of it. Lacks a little bit of whack, but say lobby. Most of my time I spend with this combination. I have a little Pro sack, because you might be thinking, oh my God, it's so heavy. It's not, just, just get stronger. Um, the 45 lives on my camera as default. The 80 mil comes out. This is an 80 mil 1.7. Um, it's actually Fuji's latest lens. It's sick. Um, again, if you want the more scientific review, <laughs> you're more than welcome. But let's talk about the bucket and the image quality. I've just had an idea. Why don't I add pictures I've taken using these lenses so you can see how my photography vision is different from yours and you can criticize all of my work, which will make me feel great. So go ahead and do that. Um, this is my latest purchase. I've had this for under a month. I want to say a month and a half. I want to say a month and a half, but it's under a month. Uh, I actually bought it because I'm going to Costa Rica on Friday and good news, I'll try and make some YouTube content out there or bad news if you hate my YouTube content. Um, F1.7, super useful. The bocker on this is insane. It's a really good portrait lens that is not um, more focused on sort of mid-level full length. I weirdly carry this around Washington Square Park doing portraits of people and I am blown away by the zwa that it has. Zwa is a word and that's a fact. Okay, we're blitzing through this because I know I talk a lot. The 110, the 110 F2, I bought this and this is my opening gambit for the system. I thought this would be my everything lens and this is my portrait lens. I have a special love for portrait photography. This is a very special portrait lens. Why do I own the 80 and the 110? It's because I'm poor at financial decisions. Um, but I bought the 110, I love the 110. It is big boy, um, but it is a, the bestest boy. Um, for, again, I, I did a studio shoot with this lens almost exclusively. Sick, like really sick, uh, loves the image quality out of it. It has the most joie of any of these lenses. This is the joyous lens in the Fuji collection. It is fucking special. 
but it, this guy and this guy probably shouldn't be in the same collection of lenses because they do step over each other a little bit more. Um, I have also rented, uh, so wow, I kissed it, right? What more of a review do you need? What more do you need to know than you want to put a lens on your camera that you just fucking fuck with? I fuck with you. I love you. Um, I bought this macro extender because I want to take pictures. You know those pictures of frogs that you get in Costa Rica? I want to take a picture of a frog. I'm not going to buy the macro lens um, because I own every damn lens. No more. So I bought the macro extension tube, which I, turns out is really hard to use. That's not feedback on the extension tube per se. It's just I'm really struggling to make it work. Um, more updates on that, probably never. Uh, and I also, when I went to Alaska to shoot bears, not with a uh, gun, with, with camera, I rented the GF250, which is about this big. And I also bought the 1.4 teleconverter from there. My favorite image I took last year was of a bear. It got featured by the Fuji Instagram account. Fucking, I got three followers from that, so suck, suck on that for metrics. Um, but that was just an experience. But dear Fuji, if you're watching this, which you won't be, make bigger lenses. The medium format animal photography, nature photography is a whole vibe. Yes, this frame shoots once every day or whatever. The shutter speeds are more than capable. The ISO is more than capable. The image quality, the image stabilization, everything about this camera, I love you so much. It's great, except for it's not like a machine gun. You know how you see people just going, <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, it doesn't do that. It goes, it's like a sniper rifle. Um, and again, if you're shooting wildlife photography, if you're a really good photographer, you'll be able to take incredible images with this because that's what incredible photographers do. It's got nothing to do with equipment. It does a little bit. It does a little bit. It does a little bit. Um, I had a blast in Alaska. It's one of the coolest places I've ever been. This was my faithful companion throughout that. I made zero YouTube content because it turns out I'm not very good at YouTube. But that's my review of every lens. Um, if you want a TLDR, nope, nope, yes, nope, yes, yes. How's that? <laughs> I'll be back. Um, if you like my content, there should be more. I appreciate you. Thank you for staying in touch. If you have any questions for me or you want me to make any specific videos, turns out I'm really open to doing that. If you want me to get scientific about anything, honestly, fuck off. I don't have, uh, I'm, just, I'm just not that guy. You can't have a personality and be scientific and be an amazing photographer and be, you know, you can actually, there's plenty. I'm not as good as other people. Thanks, guys. See you later.